I'm gonna do chapters 10 and 19 together because really chapter 19 just elaborates on something that gets addressed in chapter 10. So chapter 10 is about turning down the volume is what he calls it, but you're basically trying to reduce the negative emotions you might get from your audience in some situations. So he has a few strategies and I just wanna review the main ones. Passive voice, which you get told not to do in writing. Uh, it is sometimes a very valid choice because what it does is it deflects blame instead of I broke the lamp which you're taking ownership of something you're like the lamp got broken instead which you've removed yourself from the description of the event and it makes it harder to directly blame you that now you may get a follow-up question of how did it get broken and then you'd have to be like well I broke it but you're putting some distance between yourself and something you did so it can be a valid strategy if you got a reason for it people tell you not to do it because it's extra words you don't need but sometimes there's a purpose to those extra words so that's a strategy um something he calls setting a backfire which i told you we were going to talk about and that's just where if you mess up you sort of like beat yourself up so badly not literally but you know you're i'm so so sorry and i'm so embarrassed and uh, I can't believe I did this, but like when you do that, it's harder for people to get mad at you because most people, if they can see you're upset, will not try to make you feel worse. So that can be a good strategy if someone's inclined to be angry at you. Uh, he also spent some time talking about this idea of like system one versus system two thinking. And we'll be talking about this during class discussion a lot because there's kind of two ways to look at this. But the gist of it in this case is when people are, in, you know, in a positive state of mind, they're pretty happy. They're kind of on autopilot and that's when they're most receptive to things. But when they're thinking critically, um, it, it makes them more likely to pick apart what you're saying. And if you make them angry, most people flip into that way of looking. So like when you see a political ad from somebody who you know you don't like, you probably watch that a lot more critically than for someone that you do like because you're, I can't stand this guy. And you start looking and picking apart. Well, that's not true. That's not actually what that person was saying. That They took that clip out of context. Like you, you are in that mode but when you're more docile and you're happier you don't tend to read things the same way and so you're easier to persuade in that easygoing mindset harder to persuade in the critical thinking mindset and so what it's saying is if you want to keep people easygoing and kind of going with the flow you want to make sure that you are doing some things like speaking simply not using big words uh and then following these other strategies for reducing anger because if they get angry they're going to switch to that more hostile mindset and it's going to be a lot harder to persuade people in that mindset the last thing and this is also a strategy for keeping people in that system one easygoing thinking is humor uh, humor is good for your ethos because we like people who are funny uh, but it is also good for keeping people from being angry and putting them in a, a good mood and so he talks about it briefly and gives a few strategies in chapter 10. Chapter 19 is like all strategies for humor and cleverness, which is you know, basically smart humor. If you wanna go back and read it and get some ideas, you can do that. But ch chapter 19 is one of those that I'm telling you to skip, skim it and see if there's anything that looks interesting. I just wanna draw your attention to two things that I think are things everybody can learn to do. Uh, exaggeration is one. Uh, that's just a good part of storytelling. You want to make it clear you're exaggerating, but you can exaggerate things for humor and make them bigger. Pretty much all our entertainment is taking stuff and exaggerating it and making it bigger. Uh, so when you uh, want to get a laugh, that is a, a skill that it's pretty easy to pick up on how to make things bigger, use words that exaggerate things more and make them seem more entertaining. That's how you create humor during storytelling or it's one strategy for it. The other thing that's really cool to learn is learning how to edit yourself out loud. And that means if you misspeak, go ahead and call yourself on it. And I don't want to say make fun of yourself, but kind of. And the reason I point this one out specifically, you can use it for humor because if you can do this well, do it on the fly, it can be funny. The other thing is when you show you're willing to make fun of yourself, uh, that is also good for your ethos at the same time. People feel comfortable around someone who shows that they have a sense of humor around, about themselves as compared to someone who like you can't ever correct them or they're not willing to ever be the center of a joke. Those people are, can be kind of hard to be around because you just don't know what they're gonna get upset by or offended by, but someone who can laugh at themselves and is willing to even make themselves the butt of the joke is somebody who people are gonna be more at ease with. Now you don't wanna take it so far that people just look down on you, but that's it's pretty hard to cross that line. But having a good sense of humor about yourself can keep people from being angry at you because if you can make fun of yourself it's a lot harder for them to be mad and then it's just showing that you have a good um 
sense of humor and again sense of humor about yourself it's good for your ethos it's good for the source of humor and it's a safe way to do humor that doesn't victimize someone else because a lot of humor relies on making other people look bad if you just make yourself look bad that puts you in a good position in multiple ways so those are the things to pay attention to in chapters 10 and 19 like i said 10 read it pretty carefully chapter 19 i would just say skim and then if you see something that looks interesting sounds like your type of humor read a little bit more about it and that can help you maybe work on some of the skills you have for creating humor which is good for reducing audience anger and also good for your ethos.